So if I use the preceding example as a model, firstly I need to establish the duration of my animation. I'm going to go to the time configuration button and we're going to use custom and we're going to type in 12 frames per second. So we've established our frame rate at 12 frames per second. Then we'll go down to the animation fields here and we're going to set our duration to be 180 frames in length. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I also want to confirm that my rendering setup is correct. So currently it's set to single. At some point we may want to render out the full range and we'll also need to establish a file type for that. So if this is going to be the full range, then we'll move down here and make sure that under save file we've established a file type that's appropriate. That currently, if we rendered the entire animation, it would be a series of sequential JPEGs. What we may be looking for is an MOV, and we can go ahead and save that, and it will be given this name test2. I'm also going to still confirm that my active renderer is scanline, and yes it is. Next, considering the last file, I want to have my wall um, be off camera and arrive somewhere at frame 75 and then stay here for about 30 frames and then leave the scene. It's actually easiest to work backwards. Rather than to take all of the parts off camera and then animate them on, since they're already positioned where they need to be, go to the time in the timeline where everything is in place and then work backwards from there. So I'm going to commence by moving the playback head to frame 75 and turning on the set key button. I'll then click set key and you'll note that I've established a key at this time. I'll go ahead and move to frame 105 and we'll do the same thing, set key. We could easily go through and do this for all of the items so that they all have keys from between 75 and 105. However, some of the items we want to arrive and be fixed and in place before 75. Next I'm going to move the playback head all the way to frame 0 and I could either type in a specific value to translate the wall off screen so we'll select the move tool and we can use the transform type ins down below and use relative coordinates and take this off the screen in some nice round perfect number um, for Z or we can just simply drag it off camera and uh, that's likely um, adequate for this particular composition if you're working with something more careful where the camera is moving and you may happen to see the items, you're going to need to make sure that you have some more specific values uh, rather than just uh, to compose it by yanking it off camera like I'm doing here. Now you'll notice that I didn't get a keyframe when I did this because I'm still in keyframe so I can click on set key. Now we have a key at this moment. Now I want to come all the way down here to frame 180 and I want this animation to be able to run in the loop continuously so I need to be certain my first and last frames are going to sync up. To be able to do that I could easily come back to frame 0 and find the value of the wall in its Z coordinate and we can type that value in and have the wall positioned there and then set a key. Or what we can do is we could borrow the values from frame 0 so I can click on the playback head now that it sits at frame 180 and you'll notice that um, we get a dialog that appears and when that dialog appears it'll say what's the source time what are we borrowing from we're gonna borrow from frame 0 and we're going to apply the values from frame 0 to frame 180 Of course the values being borrowed are for the item in question the item that's been selected I only want the position, I don't care for the rotation or scale, and we'll go ahead and click OK. Now what we should find, if we scrub the playback head, that the wall is off camera, animates in, arrives by frame 75, stays fixed, and then slowly leaves the scene. Now at some point we're going to want to have this slide into the camera much more sharply. I think probably commencing at frame 60 if I remember correctly. And so uh, what we can do now is borrow from frame 180 or frame 0 and we want to force this to remain flat from 0 to 60 and from 120 to 180 so that this thing doesn't casually make its way into the scene. We want it to occur over a short amount of time. I'm going to right click on the time slider 
and we're going to say let's borrow the value from frame 180 and apply that to 60 and so now what you should see is we see no wall sliding in and then suddenly from 60 to 75 the wall slides in nice and sharp okay by the way the outlines you see here intermittently on the screen are outlines of the bounding boxes of groups um, that comprise the model and we'll reciprocate by doing the same on the opposite side it's not entirely interesting to have perfectly symmetrical compositions but it's actually very efficient to begin by building the composition uh, in half and then duplicating or mirroring the keys to the opposite side of the composition and then afterwards manipulating them so that they don't occur uh, in perfect symmetry. Next what I want to do is open up track view and observe the function curve for this wall and uh, also the dope sheet that goes with the wall so we can actually see all of these keys arrayed um, inside the track view. We retrieve track view curve editor from up above and we now see um, a series of profiles that represent um, all of the movement of the wall proper. Now you see all kinds of extra information in here that represents um, the translation, rotation, and scale of all the items that are packaged inside the wall group. And uh, it really is good hygiene to eliminate anything that's not being animated. This doesn't delete the geometries, it simply deletes the animation tracks that go with those geometries. All you really need to see is the animation of the item and the value in question. So the only thing that is changing here on the wall group is its Z position. Uh, I should take brief note that you know the wall has, as a group, has embedded inside it a series of doors and it also has the wall geometry. So there's a half a dozen items that are packaged inside there. And since they're grouped, they all move in mass as a part of the group. It is possible to open the group up and animate individual pieces on their own terms. So on the wall, uh, on its Z position, we can see the keys that we established here in the main timeline. And we can come in here and right click on any of these and we'll see handles. Now what you can do at this point is select the handle and manipulate the curve profile. Um, if we manipulate this curve here, we actually probably won't see this movement. But um, occasionally, once you set up keyframes, the profile that's produced between all the keys, um, it's attempting to make a continuous curve that joins all those points together and sometimes you'll see um, in an area like this where we want it to be flat it will be joined by a curve and your wall will come to the ground and continue to go beneath the ground and back up so you'll need to flatten that curve out and the way to flatten curves out are uh, one of a couple of options you can simply leave the default here uh, with the bezier curves and select the handles and make adjustments um, and you can break the handles and make those adjustments if we hold down shift and grab a handle. We can grab the one side and flatten it out. And if we hold the uh, opposite side now that they're broken, we can expand this curve and actually have this slowly come into the scene and then drop rather abruptly. Um, on the lower part of the screen, um, we can do the same thing. I can select the handle here and we can pull this um, a little bit more sharp uh, to its final resting point. And so what will happen is this will slowly move into the scene and then drop very quickly. You see a lot of distance being covered in a few amount of frames. So greater speed, lesser speed here, moving at a slower rate, moving at a faster rate. Um, alternatively, you could right click on any of the keys and you'll see um, a series of options for curve types that can be applied. In a sense, these are predefined curve uh, typologies. So we can have a step curve to fast in, a fast out, and so forth. Uh, you likely will find more than adequate results simply by using the Bezier curves and breaking the handles and fine-tuning the outcome you want. In this little dialog that we get by right-clicking on the keys, you'll notice that we can scroll through between all the keys that comprise this particular function curve. And as we move the, to those, uh, two things we can find out. What's exactly the time in which this key occurs? By the way, you can force this to occur at a different time simply by typing in a value. So we could nudge this over a frame or two or 10 or however many. 
and you can also establish an absolute value we'd like to have um, occur at that particular frame by typing that in here. Uh, right now, the value of this key at 60 is 1067, 189, one thousandths. That's obviously a nice, not a nice round number. And if uh, you happen to be building something up and you need specific sharp increments, um, it's easily remedied by typing in some value here.